Oh, it sounds like more visitors to church. Wait a minute. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Oh, that's a good number right there. Good morning. We'd like to welcome um, everyone this morning to morning service. Raven's going to read the visitors' names. But before the visitors stand, do you have the, the members' name? Okay. We ask that the members of the visitors stand along with your visitors. Amen? Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, would Magnolia Bo Bowman stand, please? Ronald Amos, Bryant Jackson, Nashia Vassell, I'm sorry, <laughs> Michaela Hurtado, Shantique Vassell Jackson, Danica Hughes, Bryant Jackson, Sorry, um, forgive me, I might get this wrong. Um, cool. Is that an N? I have no idea. N. Gunavale? Who is it? Amen. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Faith Marshall, Minnie Smith, Christine Vel Velasek, Javante Taylor, Rashad Lockhart. Juwan Williams, Shirley Sh Chafin, Jamil Lestello. Amen. Amen. Thank you to all of you for coming out to visit with us today. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Oscar T. Moses, we like to thank you for coming. We realize you could have been a lot of places this morning. We passed a lot of churches. We passed a lot of family and homes on our way here, but you decided to come here and we thank you for that. Immediately following service, we'd like to also welcome you to come down stairs with us. We have a, um, a slew of refreshments and finger foods. Say to, say to your neighbor, finger food. Do not think we have greens and cornbread and fried chicken and corn and all this stuff. We don't have that today. What we want to do is mix and mingle. We want to get to know our visitors. We realize that some of our visitors have their own church homes, and we praise God for that. And for those of you who do not have a church home, we welcome you to come back and visit with us again. We ask that God will touch your heart in some kind of way, whether you belong to another church home or, or you just stop and buy in obedience to what God told you this morning. We ask that you enjoy yourself, relax your mind, open your heart and your spirit up to what God has to give you today because this is a preaching church. This is a teaching church. This is a church that we come to to constantly be fed. We come here to, so that we can revive ourselves every Sunday. We don't wait for a revival to do that. And thank God for our pastor that he is here to deliver that word. So when service is over, come downstairs and fellowship with us for a few moments just so that we can thank you again. Amen and God bless you all. Come on, my Herman. Let us stand and welcome our guests. It's fellowship time. Some of us haven't seen each other all week long. Let us come amongst one another and go greet somebody that you haven't seen all week or that you don't know. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, I'm leaning, oh, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms, lean and oh, lean and. Leaning on the everlasting home. I'm leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior, safe and secure from all of I'm leaning on Jesus Christ, my Savior, leaning on the everlasting home. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. CSI, Creative, Strategic, Intentional Ministry.
the year of creativity is our church motto. On this afternoon at 3.30 p.m., we will be the special guest of the Greater Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, 2400 West Warren Boulevard. Pastor Moses is expecting the church in its entirety. Debt Relief Campaign Praise Report. Mount Hermon, to date, we have collectively given $31,952.52. If you have made a pledge to help Mount Hermon relieve its debt, we ask that you will continue to honor that pledge. And if not, maybe today is your day that you'd like to jump on board with us as we are continuing to do great things for the Lord. Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. We are continuing to pray for our members in the hospital as well as those at home on our prayer list. Call them, visit them, send them a card, let them know Mount Hermon is thinking of them and that we miss them. And as the fearless class is giving leadership to this, our first Diversity Sunday, again, Mount Hermon, we would like to encourage you to invite your guest or any visitor to come downstairs and fellowship with us with hors d'oeuvres. It's nice just to be nice and to get to know one another. And what greater way and what better way than to do that through food? So Mount Hermon, you know how we do it. We let our guests go first because they are our guests and we are happy that they are here. So please, if you see someone that it seems like they're lost, we ask you show them the way downstairs and then sit and dine with them. This concludes our announcements. We ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly.
ask that you please stand for our responsive reading. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him, on him. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. But God, God rich in his mercy, for his great love, where he loved us, even in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that in us it is the gift of God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mount Herman. Uh, to Pastor Moses, uh, to Reverend Gant, Reverend Hill, to other minister, and to my sister and brothers in Christ. Um, we come to you with an improv called Misconception. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, we have a young woman who has just gone to the doctor and found out some devastating news. She runs to, to confide in her best friend. From this point on, she comes face to face with reality gossiping, judgment, and betrayal. She questions her faith in God and begins to doubt. <clears throat> she attends Tuesday night prayer meeting where she encounters a woman she's been guilty of judging. It is through this interaction that you should never judge a book by its cover. Girl, I know. I, I told him. Don't, I told him. No, somebody not going to the police. Hold on. Hey, kitty hey, girl. I know. Hold on. I said I need to talk to you. Put Hang up that phone. Girl, I'm sorry. What's wrong? You know me, right? Girl, yeah. What's you know wrong? me all my life, right? Girl, yeah. I, I was 20 years. How you doing? I went to a doctor today. I found out I got HIV. Oh, my nails. They still what, what you going for? I just finished my nails. And you know what? My nails, you know, they bad. Oh, they, they a little cute. They, they're all right. I'm just, but I don't know what I'm doing. So, I don't, I don't know. Hey. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Hey, Peter. Hey, Sean. You, you sick? <coughs> No, no, I just, uh, I had to take care of some meat. Sure, I'll right? I, I, I talk to you later. All right. Girl, did I hear what I think I just heard her say? Uh, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, uh, I got to sit down. Are you? Uh, you sure? Uh, 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 because I think I just heard her say she has HIV. We're not supposed to. Don't, don't judge her because, you know, we're not you know, supposed to. You I don't know. need to be around her because, you know, she got that package but she, our friend, she can't though. get rid of. But she, but she our friend. And I got my own family but, to deal with. But that's with. our friend. We can't, we no, can't do it. She you got friend. her in your house. She got I, germs. I got I some Lysol. But she our friend. Kill 99.9% of germs. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but, that's so, our, but that's our friend. We can't do that to our friend. You know, I, I got to live for my family I, and ain't myself. Ain't you her friend? Ain't you her friend, though? I'm going to be her friend from a distance. Oh. But um, let me go because I got to go to get ready for Bible study tonight. Oh, okay. So I'll talk oh, to you oh, later. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Bye bye. Girl, you know that lasagna you made, it was good, but girl, come in, the door open. What you come in? Hey, y'all. Girl, I know. Oh. What y'all talking about? <laughs> that is, she made some lasagna last night. Why you didn't invite me over? It was the last minute. You, but your plan was minute. You know I like to eat. I know, girl, but I called you <laughs> and your line, your line was just your line. Why was, you just did not come my window? Because... Girl, I, I tried and... You know what? I gotta go. I you know heard. What you have? 
Ooh. That package. UPS ain't been to my you house. You know what? Oh, that package you can't get rid of. You know what? You know what? People, we gotta get, we gotta get ready. We gotta get ready. Prime me been a star. Girl, but prime me been a star. So you know we gotta get ready. Prime me because your pastor, you know, pastor. See, that's why I be trying to lead y'all the right way. See, the devil is a lie. But we gotta get ready for prime me because pastor, your pastor start at seven. So you like to start on time. So you know we gotta get ready. You know what? Yeah, I'ma go on and find my seat because y'all just look. Girl, I know. Yeah, sit, sit back there. You weren't supposed to say nothing. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I tell you about friends. Mm. Good evening. It is indeed a privilege and a blessing to be in the Lord's house one more time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anyone here today that would like to share a brief testimony about how good God has been in your life? Will there be one today? Oh, here come this old drunk here. Ooh. I've been up all night drinking, but I made it to church. Amen. You still look drunk now. My God. God is not through with her yet. Don't look like he started. Yet there is hope. Will there be another that would like to share a brief testimony on how good God has been in their life? Pastor, I have a testimony. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'd like to offer a word of encouragement. Oh, Lord, here go right. blossom. <sighs> I'd like to offer a word of encouragement to anyone in the congregation that feels like they can't make it through. All right. Pastor, um, I was also Ooh, I was diagnosed with ever. HIV. <laughs> 12 years ago. Oh, girl, who you get it from? I knew oh. I knew she was sick. She real skinny. I told y'all, y'all can't judge them. Don't do that. <laughs> and I would like to say, I felt devastated when that happened. I come from an Orthodox church where they turned their back on me, and my family turned their oh. back on me, and, and my friends, and I felt all alone. I feel your pain. But oh, God drew God. me to a church where... I would have a praying pastor and a teaching pastor, and, and I was able to draw closer to the Lord. And through his teachings, I have been um, changed and saved. I want to offer encouragement to anyone who feels that they are standing alone in their darkest moment, that that is not your darkest moment, because there is a light named Jesus right there with you. And I found that out, and tonight I just wanted to stand and offer that encouragement to someone here who might also need that. Thank you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for that testimony. In our closing of our prep meeting on tonight, the Lord dropped a word in my spirit coming from Ephesians 4, verse 32. And be kind one another, one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You know in life we all have a mask that we tend to hide behind to cover a multitude of sins. To use as a barrier of separation to prevent others from getting close to us. However we do encounter those who wear masks of many faces. We call those people two-faced backstabbers and deceivers you know mask has a way of hiding our fears and they allow us to be someone that God did not even create us to be but there comes a time in life when we will be presented with obstacles that challenge everything that we have come to know but I want to encourage you to unveil that mask don't be ashamed of who you are because God has made you perfect in his eyes and he knows all about you and he knows all that you have need of. Yes, you may have done things to hurt others. You may have done things to hurt yourself. However, there is somebody named God, the one who is able. God, the one who rules, reigns over our lives. I just want to encourage you today to lose that facade. Lose that covering, that mask that you're hiding behind. Remove the shield and allow God to be revealed. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this place.
man, that sound like me. Ooh. Why, Lord, what in the family is going on? I've been safe and, hey, girl, you know, what you said, you know, it helped me because, you know, <laughs> I just found out that I have HIV, too. <coughs> Sounds like you no. got the flu. No, but I want to apologize to you because you don't know this, but I called you Blossom. Called you Crackhead. I said you looked a little hungry because you get yeah, skinny, and I said you look like a bowl of fruit. I'm sorry. It's okay. My name is Blossom, though. It is. Yes. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Oh, okay. Um, yes, yes. You know, I was told that God so loved the world, but but is this punishment for me talking about people and, and beating up on other people's kids? Absolutely not. Listen, no. God so loved the world that he gave yeah. his only begotten son, and it will be remiss of me <laughs> not to be encouraging to you. Yeah. I will walk you through this yeah. all the way and do whatever yeah. I can to encourage you. Oh, you keep your head thank up. You, girl. Oh. Let's feel the pillars clash a hand for that presentation for allowing God to use them in the mighty way. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the part of service where we all are uh, participants. For uh, Pastor always tell us that you have not yet worshipped until you worship God in your giving. Amen. 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 Holding a basket to my left, Deacon Cooper is holding a basket. That's the love offering for our pastor. Here in the box in the middle, those of you that are tithers, those that are given at least a tenth of, of what God has given you, this is um, where you put it in the um, tithing box. And to my right, Brother Jones, Deacon Jones here is holding just the offering basket. If you just want to give an offering to the church, you put it in that basket there. And we also have here to my far right, the change for the future. For we're trying to put all those monies towards our goal for our debt relief campaign. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads and have a quick word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you now for these gifts that we are about to receive. We thank you for the givers. We thank you for those that have and those that don't have but desire to give. We ask, oh God, that you are blessed now, some 30, some 60, some even 100 fold. In your blessed son, Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Come on, let's put your hands together as we prepare to give. Let us all stand and follow the direction of the ushers.
you woke me up this morning, started me on my way, put food on my table, brought joy to my day. I'm glad your love has never changed, and wonderful, and wonderful, and wonderful, wonderful is your name. Everybody had the opportunity to begin. Let us all stand.
Let's give a hand to those that serve us, our deacons and our ushers and our nurses. Amen. Let us receive now the greatest choir here on this side of Chicago, the O.T. Moses Sanctuary Choir.
Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. 
We want him to keep his loving arms. Come on, put your hands together. If you feel like it, stand on your feet this morning. God's been good to you. We got 90 degree weather. And most of y'all walked in here. If you walked in here on your own, you are already blessed. So we're just asking you to bless the Lord with us. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands. Bless the Lord with me. Come on, everybody. Bless. The Lord with me. Come on, come on, everybody. Bless the Lord with me. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Bless the Lord I'll with me. Do one more thing. Come on, clap your hands. Listen. Clap your hands with me. Everybody ought to clap your hands with me. If you got life in your body, do it with me. Clap. Wave your hand, wave your hand with me. Come on, everybody. Wave your hand. Like we're gonna say hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. 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 That's the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 Take me off. Oh. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on, say it with me. Oh, bless the Lord with me. It's corporate praise this morning in my harmony. Bless the Lord with me. Oh, bless the Lord. The Lord with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on. Clap your hands with me. Hallelujah. Clap your hands with me. Come on, clap your hands this morning. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. All ye land, serve him with your hands with me. Wave your hand this morning. Wave your hands with me. I'm glad about it. Wave your hands with me. Wave your hands with me. Wave your hands with me. Come on, you wave your hands. Wave your hands with me. We got one more. Do your dance, do your dance with me. Come on, come on, everybody. Do your dance with me. Come on, we're going to dance for the Lord like David. Do your dance with me. Hallelujah. Do your dance. Do your dance. Make the noise with the Lord and say, Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Let's remain standing. Let's remain standing. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. And how many of you are glad to be alive this morning? Then do me a favor, put your hand in your neighbor's hand and say, Neighbor, oh neighbor, it's a good day to be alive. Keep looking at him and say, Any day is a good day to be alive. Now, if you really believe what you just said, why don't you put your hands together? Thank God for life, limb, and liberty. Let me say, first of all, I'm so happy uh, to have sharing with me a good friend of mine from Los Angeles, California. Uh, he's a frat brother of mine, but he's also a preacher. 
and he's also the president of the Midwest Western region of African American accountants. And so I thank God for his presence here today. Uh, this is Diversity Sunday. Uh, over 40 years ago, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King said, it's a sad fact, but the most segregated hour in the world is the 11 o'clock Sunday morning worship experience. We've learned how to integrate ourselves in the workplace. We've learned how to integrate ourselves in schools, but we have not become integrated in the church. And out of all the things that we've accomplished in America, this is one thing that we have not accomplished. And knowing that Jesus Christ died for all, he died for the black, the white, red, yellow, and so the relevant question today, I want to ask you to pray about that as I ask you to bow your heads in a few seconds. The relevant question to ask is, if Jesus Christ died for everyone, I said if he died for everyone, then why is the church so divided? Bow your head and close your eyes. And you ask the Lord personally to open up your heart and your mind that you would receive what he would have you understand through the preaching of his word. Our Father and our God, we thank you for allowing us to make it back in the sanctuary one more Sunday morning. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to put one foot in front of the other. And that repeated action has moved our bodies into the sanctuary. Here we are, Lord. We are your people and you are our God. Come now, Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts. Fill this place. Open our eyes that we might see our ears that we might hear our hearts that we may feel forgive us O oh lord of all of our sins and create within us a clean heart and please sir renew the right spirit within us thank you now for allowing us to assemble under the banner of a resurrected christ bless he or she that is here today that when we leave here we'll be better than when we came it's in the precious the powerful the preeminent name of jesus christ our savior and our soon coming king and all of those who love the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Are we ready? Aim fire. This is my Bible. There are many like it, but this one is mine. It is my weapon. It is my road map in enemy country. In my Bible is found the plan of salvation. Romans 10 and 9 says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It is by my humility towards our Christ, hospitality within our congregation, hard work within our community, that the unsaved would be won to Christ. I would that you would turn your attention to the New Testament book of 1 Corinthians and want to look at chapter 12 and one verse out of that chapter when you get this say I got it if you don't have it say hold on I'm not going to hold on forever now Bible study will be starting back up shortly if you're in the front of the book then you're in the wrong place you need to go to the table of contents page 560 in my Bible amen I want us to read verse number six of first Corinthians, not second Corinthians, but first Corinthians chapter 12, verse six. Ready, set, read. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. In all. Amen. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand. Grab a neighbor by the hand, look them in the eye like you love the Lord and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh, neighbor. You look marvelous. Tell them it's good to see you in church. 
The preacher needs all of your prayers and all of your amens. Today's lesson, different but not deficient. Look at someone and say different and not deficient. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now this is a black Baptist church and we believe in talking back to the preacher. Amen. So you holler at me and we'll get out of here real quick. You don't say nothing to me. I don't have nothing to do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The Apostle Paul writes this letter. And he writes this letter of First Corinthians uh, in response to division in the church. And the the reason why he writes this letter is because those within the church had become divided as it relates to their spiritual gifts. There were some Christians that felt that the gift that God gave them was superior to other Christians gift. They thought that their gift was a cut above. They thought that the gift that God had blessed them with somehow measured beyond anyone else's gift. And so chapter 12, Paul is writing a response. Look at someone and say a response. He's writing a response to the church of Corinth to teach them the various ways in which God uses all of his children. And maybe I need to pause right there and say there is a difference between being a child of God and a difference between being his creation. For brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we all were created by God. But all of us are not his children. For those of us that believe that the tomb in Jerusalem is empty and believe that Jesus Christ raised was raised from the dead, for those of us that believe that he died on the cross and was buried in a borrowed tomb and woke, got up on the third day morning with all power in his hands, we have become the children of Almighty God. So Paul writes this letter to say that God gives all of his children gifts. Everyone in here today, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then God has blessed you with a spiritual gift. You may not know what it is, but it's on the inside. God put it in us for us to bring it out. And so Paul makes it very clear that God gives gifts. And Paul writes this letter in response to teach them the various ways in which God uses diversity to affect this plan. He makes it clear at the beginning of this chapter that ignorance is not an option. If you haven't closed your Bibles on me, if you look at verse number one, at the beginning, Paul makes it clear that he does not want us to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. Ignorance about another has kept us divided down through the ages because we assume that we understand the background and cultural differences of others. But we speculate. Look at somebody and say, we speculate. Maybe that was the wrong name, but look at the other name and say, we speculate on unreliable, ignorant information. To be more direct, there were some divisions in the early church because there were some ignorant people that thought they were superior because God gifted them differently. Church of Corinth was the most gifted church that Paul had founded. But they also were the most troublesome church. He had more trouble out of Corinth than any other church that he founded. It seems as though the more gifted they were, the more trouble they caused. 
the more they had gifts, the more superior they thought they were. Until all of a sudden there were divisions within the church. There was this group that thought they were better than this group. And, and this group that thought they were better than this group. And this group that thought they were better than this. Lord, deliver me from division in the church. He says in this text, Paul, that anyone that seeks to curse Jesus is not from God. But anyone that says Jesus is master has the Holy Spirit. And Paul said God gives gifts. But here it is. We don't all have the same gift. If you are a Christian, you have a gift. Whether you are black, white, red, brown, yellow, it's a gift that comes from God. So look at verse 6 right quick, then we're going to bounce to the crib together. It says, and there are diversities of what? Operations. But it is the same who? Which worketh all in all. Let's, let's, let's see what this text says, and then we'll all go home together. What, what does Paul mean when he says diversity of operations? Glad you asked. We know that the word diversity means different. But what kind of operation is Paul talking about? When he uses the word operation, he means works produced in the church or the work of the church. You do know that there is a difference between doing church work and the work of the church. Come on, holler back at me if you can. You, you, you do know that, that cooking pies and cake is, is, is church work, but doing the work of the church, I wish y'all felt like it this morning. It means sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with somebody else. And so Paul says, God help me, that he gives gifts. God gives everybody up in here. Up in here. Everybody has a gift that God gives for his purpose and not your purpose. I keep telling you that this is God's story and not our story. God wants us to rise up, not try to pull him down to what we want him to do. But this is God's operation. Amen. 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 It means that there are different gifts given to the church to make it function. But each gift does not have its own God. Each gift is given by the same God. One Lord. One faith. God help me. One baptism. Oh, my brothers and sisters. If God gives gifts to all believers, it means that everyone has a job to do. Because this is God's operation. This is his business, and the business of the church is to save souls. That's a major operation. Three things I want you to understand about this text, and I'm almost through. First of all, this text wants us to understand the discovery of gifts. Help me say that, the discovery of gifts. I've already told you, let me tell you again, God gives you a gift once you become a believer. But your gift, here it is, is not your decision. Your gift is your discovery. You can't decide what you want your gift to be. God makes the decision what your gift should be. The Wright brothers invented the airplane. The airplane didn't tell the Wright brothers Come on and talk back to me. Ford, Model T Ford to Ford. The car didn't tell Henry Ford what he wanted to be. But the creator decides what he wants the created to be. And you can't decide what your gift is. You have to discover what your gift is. I wish I had time to talk about discovering your gifts. Because the first place that starts in discovering your gifts is that you first of all have to assume a posture of humility. You cannot walk into your assignment if you are arrogant. You cannot walk into your assignment if you got too much pride. Sometimes God has to break you all the way down that you can discover what he has for your life. And I wish I had a witness in here that can testify. Yeah, Reverend, you preaching to the guilty this morning because I did not know what my gift was, but God allowed me to go through some storms and some rain. He, he allowed me to go through some sickness and some pain. That's how I discovered I heard someone say the two most important days in your life 
are the day that you are born and the day that you discover why you were born. I said something profound right there. The day you were born. And the day you discover why you were born, the discovery of gifts. But second of all, this text lifts up the diversity of gifts. Look at someone and say diversity. diversity. Nobody has the same gift. Everybody cannot be a preacher. Everyone does not have the gift of hospitality. And, and maybe I ought to stop right there and say if you don't have the gift of hospitality, then maybe you ought not be on the hospitality ministry. You've got to stay in your own lane. Am I right there? You've got to do what God has called you to do. There, there is no need because there are diversity gifts. means that everyone has different gifts. My gift is different. Your gift is different. It makes no sense for me to try to act like you. Check one, two, three. I, I remember when I started... Uh, preaching, Reverend Irvin, I, I wanted to be like Joseph Allen, and I got some of them in me because that's my granddaddy. I wanted to be like C.L. Franklin. I wanted to be like Jasper Williams. Amen. But I found out, I found out, JT, why be a cheap imitation of somebody else when I can be a first class presentation of who God wants me to be? Come here, boo, because I don't have to like you, you don't have to act like me. Just do you. Just be who God has called you to be. Anybody see the movie Ray Charles? Remember when Ray first started playing the piano? Uh, they said, you know, you sound like Nat King Cole. And then they said, you sound like Charles Brown. They said, we can't use another Charles Brown. We can't use another Nat Cole. Nat Cole. We need to hear Ray Charles. And once he discovered who God had called him to be. I didn't tell you on my way to heaven because heaven is my goal. You discover what God has called you to do. Stop worrying about everybody else. Stop worrying about what other people are doing and how they're advancing. You just focus on the reason why God created you. Look at somebody and say, just do you. Just do you. Boo. <laughs> Amen. The discovery of gifts. The dependency of gifts, I mean the diversity of gifts, but the third thing is that we have the dependency of gifts. Say the dependency of gifts. For the body of Christ to work properly, all gifts must depend on one another to function properly. If I want to get over to the organ to get a piece of candy, my mind is working. And my eyes are working. My taste buds started working. But there got to be some cooperation from my feet and my legs and my hands. If I wanted to work properly, everybody has a job to do. I need you. You need me. We need each other to survive. Why well, preach a message like this and I'm all, almost through? Jesus calls people from different cultural, ethnic, sociological backgrounds to carry out his missions. And we don't all look the same. We don't all worship the same. We don't all do church the same. We don't all preach the same. Our choirs don't all sing the same. We're all different, but here it is. Different does not mean deficient. And that leads me to the reason why we can't all sing together, why we cannot worship together. Why is it that we can't come together? And I don't, let me just stop right here and be transparent and say it may never be a time in our lifetime where we might see the world as a universal church. It may not ever happen in our lifetime. Is it what God intends for us to happen? Yes, in, in the great band, I believe we'll all be together. And I believe that there are some successful multicultural churches that are able to do it effectively. But can, let me give you three reasons why we why, why it's such a problem right now. The first reason is tragedy. Look at somebody and say tragedy. What do you mean tragedy? It's the tragedy of sin that has separated us. I don't care how you look at it, uh, whether you're white, black, brown, 
What separates us is not so much the skin color. But I believe that if we all sat down at the table, that we would discover that we have a common enemy. It's not one another. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I wish y'all felt like it. I need to tell you that there's an enemy that gets in between you and us. That keeps us separated. He's fickle. He's, he's faceless. He does not have no face. And he's ferocious. And he does all that he can to bring separation among God's children. Tragedy is the number one reason. But the second reason is tradition. Say tradition. Many of us are steeped in tradition. We're steeped in traditions that will not change until God gets ready to call us home. I, I must admit, I, I struggled with this question. How can we worship together? Can I be for real? I, I tried to think of every reason maybe why we shouldn't. But one reason is because we're so comfortable in doing it our way. That we don't want to change what we've been doing for so long. The truth is God wants us to worship together. That, that's his end game. Look at somebody and say, that's his end game. Yeah. It's his end game, even if it don't happen to Jesus come back. I've told you about, first of all, tragedy, tradition. But then the third thing is tyranny. Say tyranny. Tyranny secures us. Pride and power keeps us separated. We don't want to lose control over the way we do worship. These three things separate us. But can I tell you where we find common ground at? No matter what color we are, no matter what background we come from, yes, we are separated by tragedy. Yes, we are separated by tradition. Yes, we are separated by tyranny. But can I tell you that we all can come together under a tree? Yeah. On a hill called Calvary. Jesus died, y'all. And that's where we find common ground that he didn't just die for black folk or white folk. Or he died for everybody. As a matter of fact, look at your neighbor. Tell him he died for all of us. That, that's what brings us together. That's what that's where we find the common bond. And I can tell you that what unites us is bigger. Than what separates us. We may never have a unified society. That embraces everybody. But here's what I want you to do today. As you leave here today. We may not be able to change the whole world. But here's what I want you to do. Here is the watchword for the week. You take care. Your nick of the woods. Can I tell you again? You take care. Your nick of the woods. Wherever you worship at, don't turn your nose up when somebody walks in that looks different than you. Wherever you work at, before you start judging somebody, find out something about their story. Find out the reason why they act the way. Don't, don't just write people off just because they don't look like you, just because they don't act like you. Can I tell you that different does not mean deficient? Dr. Paul Brand tells this story. It talks about uh, how we cut people off. Dr. Paul Brand says, I, I performed many amputations in my life. Most of them were because someone's hand or foot could no longer feel pain. He says, that's the problem with the church. Lord, help me. There are people whose pain we never sense. Because we've cut off the sensitivity that would link us to them. There are people that suffer silently, unnoticed by the rest of the church. People are different, but look at somebody and say they're not deficient. When we exclude from fellowship somebody whom we feel less worthy, we rob them of the compassions they deserve. And we rob the body of its health and wholeness. Those affected, Dr. Brand concludes, are left to flounder, cut off from the balances and diversity of the larger body and the compassion that might help them. I'm done this morning, but I want to celebrate. I want to celebrate that we serve a God that recognizes our differences. I want to close by saying that I want to celebrate the fact that we serve a God. 
that loves us no matter what race we are. I want to close by saying uh, I want to celebrate the fact that Jesus died for you and for me. And I want you to grab that neighbor by the hand this morning and say neighbor oh neighbor say neighbor I know a man that's from Galilee when I was in trouble he set me free son of David seed of Abraham stone you out of the mountain meek and humble lamb is there anybody in here that can thank God today that he made you different is there anybody in the sanctuary don't mind waving your hands and saying I thank you Lord that when you made me you broke the mold can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord can I go higher is there anybody here that don't mind waving your hand and say I thank God that I may be different but I'm not deficient I thank God that I'm not like nobody else I thank God that he made me for a specific time in it all right here can you say glory can you say hallelujah can you say I feel better so much better since I laid my burdens down point at somebody and say friends don't treat me I wish y'all felt like it friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down can you say it I'm through preaching, but I feel like celebrating. Is there anybody in here that don't mind celebrating with me? Is there anybody in here that don't mind doing your dance? Then do me one favor this morning, and I'm in my seat all over the sanctuary. Just stand to your feet. Go grab somebody. Grab them by the hand. Come on, do that right now. And say, neighbor. Neighbor, say neighbor, I haven't always been in church, I haven't always been holy, tell them way back in the day, I used to do my dance, tell them I'm still dancing, but I've learned how to dance for the Lord, is there anybody in here that don't mind dancing for the Lord Jesus? Then grab that neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm ready to do my dance. I don't know if it's the running man. I don't know what your dance is. But if I can dance in the wall, I can dance for the Lord. Ain't it all right? Can you say yeah? Ain't it all right? Say yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tell your neighbor it's all right. Tell him I'm just thanking the Lord. I'm thanking the Lord for making me different. I'm thanking the Lord for who I am. And if you don't want to thank him, I'll thank him for you. Yeah! 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 I'm done. I said I'm done. I was through preaching a long time ago. I'm just thanking God for who he is and for who he made me to be. And you ought to thank God for who he's made you to be. My granddaddy used to say, it's a poor dog that won't wag his own tail. 
every now and then you got to pat your own self on the back and say yeah yeah is there anybody here the doors of our church are open we're standing all over the sanctuary I'm done y'all but this is what I'm going to ask you to do as we get ready to go home we're going to come to the altar and we're going to have prayer let's do that now come to the altar we're going to have prayer explain to you what we're doing right now we're not only going to pray but we want to extend the privilege of the church and so whoever you're standing next to as you bow your head to pray you need to find out what is their relationship with Jesus Christ or perhaps they've never accepted Christ as their personal savior they can do so today and here it is this may not be the church of your choice that's fine our business is to fill up heaven, not Mount Hermon. Our soul business is soul business. And so our prayer that if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that today you will make a decision for him. Here's what we're doing. I'm going to ask Reverend Raphael Irvin from the Greater New Bethel Church in Los Angeles, California, to come and offer us prayer. After he has prayed, we're going, I'm going to ask Reverend Gant to come forward and to continue, and to continue extending the privilege of the church. Reverend Irvin. Let us all bow. Father in heaven, how we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of seeing a day, Lord, we didn't earn, a day we didn't deserve. Lord, a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. Lord, you blessed us. You touched us early this morning and kept in our right mind. Put food on our table, clothes on our back. You bless with traveling grace and make it down to this house of prayer, this place of worship one more time. And we say thank you today. Thank you, Lord, for the message. That allow us to remind that we are individually made. We're unique in your sight. We all have gifts that you've given us, Lord, to discover in us that we may be a blessing in your kingdom. And right now we ask you, Lord, to reveal those, 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 those talents that we have within us, Lord, those blessings within us, Lord, right now, that we all know our purpose for being here. Lord, you didn't make a mistake. There are folks who, good folks died on last night. Good church court folks didn't make it to see today. But you let us see today. In spite of all you know we've done wrong. And all you know we're going to you let us see one more day. And we say thank you, Lord. Help us know our purpose for being here one more day. We're not here to waste today. We're here, Lord, to live in your purpose. To be a beacon of life for this community. And we're standing in right now. Bless this pastor today, Lord. Bless this church, the ministers, Lord, all the, the officers and members of this church. That, that we may know, Lord, what you would have us to do, Lord, in our lifetime. Lord, bless all those who are around this community, all those who are in, in walking into this church today, Lord, who, who need you today. Who are struggling, Lord, with life, Lord, with loss of jobs, Lord, and, and living on the county, Lord, and, and looking for opportunities in the school, Lord, and, and dealing with your gang banging and, and walking around death all around us, Lord. Help us right now to know what you have us to do in our lives today. Help us to appreciate each day you give us, Lord. We don't have to see the day. You let us see the day because you want us in the day. Lord, bless us in the day and we'll be a light for the world to see that you are still the miracle working business. We say thank you right now for what you've already done. But you've already created miracles in our lives over and over again. You blessed us. Time and time again, you brought us through. So right now we say thank you. We celebrate you right now. We say hallelujah to your lamb. Hallelujah to your name right now. Hallelujah because you're a good God. You're mighty. You, you're great in all your creation. Lord. We say thank you right now. For being a blessing to us. Lord, we can't thank you enough for this loving us. Lord, you love us before we knew who we were. You love us in spite of who we are right now. 
And Lord, we say thank you for you're going to lead us, Lord. Order our steps that we will live a life pleasing unto you. And Lord, we give your name to praise. In the mighty and master of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 As we remain standing, and as some of you return to your seat, the invitation is still given. Will there be one today to receive Christ as the head of their life? You don't have to be ashamed here at Mount Hermon. All you have to do is take one step forward. Somebody will walk down with you. He will give you bread to life. No life abundantly. Life abundantly. You've been out of the ark of safety over the last 90 days. You can restore your relationship back with Christ on today. Just because you've been away doesn't mean that God has gone away. You can come also. To those that may be watching us over the internet, you can reach out to us at mhmbc at live.com. mhmbc at live.com. Will there be another? Let us bow our heads. Lord God, we thank you now for these that have come. We thank you for your word that has gone forth, the sound and brass. Touch now that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that may be under the sound of my voice, that heard the word of God go forth. We ask that you will prick their hearts right now, God, that they may make a decision for you on today. They may be wrestling with undecision, but we know, oh God, that you are able to keep them in perfect peace. We ask you to keep them in your care, keep them in your love. Lord God, grant them yet another opportunity to come and give their lives unto you, that they may come to know you as we do. It's in your blessed son Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Bless you. You may be seated in the presence of God bless you, brother. Church, let's say good morning to Brother Hosea Smith. He's coming on his Christian experience. Let church say amen. So you come over here to, to serve at Mount Hermon. Do you live in the neighborhood? Um, first of all, so I want to say it's a privilege to shake your hand. I can't get this close to Reverend Meeks. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, just, I'm still going through some changes. My 17-year-old son was shot and killed. And I had to bury him last Monday. Uh, We're going to pray for you right now, man. I need some prayer warriors over here. JT, come on up here. Uh, come on, Wendell. Mike Rogers, come on up here. You too, Sean. I need some young men. going to cover this young man in prayer. This is a, a dog-eat-dog world uh, that we live in. And if you can't find refuge in the house of God, 
I wish I had a witness here. Amen. Amen. Put your hands on them as many of you can. We're going to pray for them. Our Father in heaven, we come right now. Yes, um, this is a young black man who's been a victim of the violence of the streets, lost his son to violence. But Lord, we know that you are Lord of all. And we know that you are sovereign. And so right now, Father, we put our hands, we wrap our arms around Hosea. Yes, a biblical name. Yes. Salvation name. Yes. And we pray for this, brother. Yes. We pray for healing. Yes. We pray for reconciliation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We pray, oh God, that if he can't, can't even sleep at night, that the Holy Spirit will wrap his arms around him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give him the comfort that he needs. Yes. Let him know, Father, that vengeance is yours. Yes. Clear his mind of anything, Father, that's evil. And, Father, we pray right now through your Holy Spirit that you would give him the peace that passeth all understanding. Yes, the peace that will keep his mind from a meltdown yes. and his heart from heaviness. Yes, yes. Touch Hosea right now. Right now Let him know that he has a new family. Yes. Let us be all that we should be yes, in terms yes, of yes, sir. Yes, sir. you've gifted us all differently. Yes. And Lord, help us utilize our gift that we might strengthen Hosea right yes, now. Yes, we thank you, Lord, that thank you right now, the doors of our church were open, that he would come this way. Yes, and Lord, you've prepared us for such a time as this. Yes, God, we love you. We love you love Hosea, yes. but we know that you love him best. Yes. Give him what he needs, God, whatever it might be. It's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We count all joy through faith. Through faith. And all of those who love the Lord said amen. amen. They said amen again. Amen. Now throw your hands and head back and say it like you mean it. Amen. Jose, let me give you the right hand of fellowship. Giving you all rights and privileges any other member. Amen. Have a seat for one quick second. Sister Ferguson, come on up here. Where Deja at? Deja, where's Deja? Come on and wrap your arms around. Your mama. Welcome back to Sister Ferguson is coming back on her Christian experience. Um, now, this was a good day to have Brother Murillo in church. They wouldn't let him off today. Let me extend you the right hand of fellowship, uh, giving you once again all rights and privileges. Any other member of the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church, come on, wrap your arms around your daughter. Prayer works, Sister Ferguson. Prayer works. Amen. Deja, glad to have your mama back. Now I'm going to ask that both of you would stand right quick, and you're going to follow this young man and this young lady right here, and they're going to give you further instructions. Be encouraged. Let church say amen. All right, we're getting ready to go home, but let me make a few announcements, and then we'll be on our way. Just before we go, um, I just want to announce that downstairs for our guests, we brought like some appetizers. We didn't bring a full course.